Well, it's just as well the video is not going to capture the smell. <laughs> Otherwise, none of the engine was hot. Surely this is the one you want to start. Yeah, we're going to have a look at this one and see if it'll go. Not sure how much success we'll have, but we'll see what we've got. This is a well picked over car. There's no wires or anything left on it really to speak of. So providing the motor turns around, it may go. So what have we got? No coil, no plug leads. Let's, let's go and have a look for some bits and pieces, but we'll just sort of have a quick look around it. Throttle shaft's pretty much, it's gummed up, but it'll turn. Let's we'll see if the engine will turn over. Now this is a 186 Holden, guys, and for Holden six-cylinder enthusiasts, they are a bit of a legend. Probably the engine that GMH really established itself as building top quality reliable vehicles. Well that turns around. We could have a few stuck valves. Now this one, it's a 1971 Holden and it's right on the model change. And I've known this car years before it wound up being a dead car in the yard here. And I've known it from when it was oh, less than 10 years old really. And it's already got some of the next model features on it. So the alternator is actually the one that belongs to the next model Holden but it was factory fitted to this car and I actually rebuilt that alternator when I was an apprentice. It's strange how it all works out. So we've got a few things to go and find and um, yeah I think as far as a will at start goes it'll be a good one. So we'll grab, grab a few bits and pieces from the shed and we'll waddle back here and see what we can do with it. We've got a couple of... So... What's it missing that you're going to need to go look for? The, the wiring for the distributor. So we've got no plug leads on it, no coil on it, so we need a coil. And we're also going to have, we can use this piece of hose to just loop the transmission cooler lines because there's no radiator in it either. But we can start it and run it for a minute or so and see what we get anyway. It's still got oil in it, so it's a good thing. It's still liquid. And um, yeah, all right, back to the shed. We'll grab a battery and some fuel, some leads, and we'll return. Where are you going to get your coil from? Out of my pile of rubbish. Right, because of course you've got spare coils and leads. I've got and lots things. of spare things. Everything. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> if we can steal one off the brown yet, that'd be cool. Well, that's what I was wondering was, were you going to go pull apart your car to, yeah. to get stuff out of it? Where's the problem? Well, you might want to drive your car. Yeah, we can steal bits in the interim. We don't need them forever. We just need bits and pieces. Okay. That's a good point, though. If you take Mum with you, you can go out into the little shed and grab the distributor cap and all the leads off the um, white car. Right. You know how to work that? Uh, I'm sure I can look it up on the internet if I get stuck. <laughs> you pull look it up on YouTube? Yeah, probably. Right, -o. well you go and do that and I'll go and find some tools and bits and pieces. Oh, I'm going to need some tools, aren't I? No, just, no. just unclip the two just unclip. clips on the distributor, take the cap and pull the leads off from right beside the spark plug. Right, okay. That's all you need is the cap and the leads. Cap and the leads, alright. Yeah. We'll figure that out, I guess. Yeah. We all know how to stop people from um, driving away old cars. Take the distributor cap with you. Take the rotor arm out. Your great grandfather Teal used to do that when he drove a Model A. He used to take the rotor with him wherever he went, just put it in his pocket. This is great video with the back of you too. Yep. Yeah, I thought it might be. Unless you wanted to walk backwards in front of us. <laughs> well, actually, what you need is a drone. Yeah. And have the drone fly backwards in front of us. Actually, yeah. um, I think the one Jeremy's got can do that. Oh, wow. You can tell it to do face tracking and it'll just hover along. Awesome. 
you can get one of those. I'd love to. Make it out of your YouTube millions. Yeah. I'm going to get a fly and strap something to its back. Well, Call it a drone. Hey, I've got bees. You do? I can actually You've get You've got drone. drones, haven't you? Plenty of them. No sting on a drone. I think I was an old hand at this. Looking good. There you go. And this is off the HR. Just come off. It just comes off. Easy. Now, did we need anything else out of it or just the actual the cap? That's all he said. That's all he said. Grabbed it right around. What's this one? Does it lift? It does. Good. You get over there and you'll say, I didn't tell you to take that. Oh my god, don't take that off! <laughs> Not yeah. <myself>. Bruck it. <laughs> Ruined! Does it remind you something out of the Matrix? Oh yeah, I can see that. <laughs> sort of flying along yeah. and arms sticking out there. Yeah, 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 I see yeah, that. Yeah. Budget special effects here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want the road around? Because we got it. No, I didn't really need that, but it all doesn't matter. We figured since we got it, you probably wouldn't need it. If we didn't get it, you would. Right. That's the usual way it works from here. Now, we've got pretty much everything we need except for a coil. So we'll just steal one off here. Brown Newt won't mind if we rob his coil for a little while. He can have it back later. first go to. Now this is not really the right coil for this engine because it's running without a Holden wiring harness. It's just got a straight 12 volt coil on there at the moment and once again all of the concourse judges out there will notice that this is a six cylinder coil bracket and not a V8 one. The V8 one does mount the coil sort of poking out like that. But this was convenient. A little bit spinner. Now Holdens and Fords, cars like that from this era, don't run a 12 volt coil. They run a around seven and a half, eight volt coil. Why don't you want to come off? And the reason for this is there's a resistor built into the wiring harness on Holdens. On some cars they're external. The old Toyota Land Cruisers and things like that, a little block on the side of the coil, the Valiants and things, had one up on the inner guard. Now that's a ballast resistor which drops the voltage down from 12 volts or 14 volts when the alternator's charging to whatever the coil is, 7 or 8 volts. They vary a bit from car to car. Now the resistor, the material it is, if there's a lot of current going through it, I should have my glasses on, I can't see what I'm doing here. Um, if there's a lot of current going through the coil, which when you're going slow, there will be, because it's a breaker point ignition. And because of the engine slow running, the points are closed for a longer period of time than if it's screaming its head off. So when the current increases through the ballast resistor, it actually heats up and the resistance material in the wire changes and it reduces the voltage to the coil, so the coil won't overheat. So instead of getting seven or eight volts, it's probably gonna have six volts there, so the coil will cool down. Now the opposite happens when you go fast. So if you crank it right up, the um, ballast resistor will cool down and the resistance will change, and it will allow more current and more voltage to go to the coil, and it'll give you a hotter spark at high speed. Now believe it or not, the first car in the world to have this feature was the 1932 Ford V8. And because of the being a V8, the first time in history we had breaker points that were 
being closed for a very short period of time. It was only a six volt system, but they ran a four and a half volt coil and a volt and a half resistor in it. And the big funny thing, for, well, the strangest thing about it was, the best feature of this system is when you crank the motor over, you can put a bypass past the resistor to hot the coil up while you're cranking and get a better spark for cranking. Ford never worked that out. A lot of people never worked out. English cars were famous even in the 1970s. You'd sit there cranking them over and over and over and over and over and they wouldn't go with their straight 12 volt coil. You let go of the key and they'd burst into song. And that's because when you're cranking, you've only got 10 and a half volts cranking voltage. As soon as you let go of the key, it goes back to 12. You suddenly get a big hot spark and she lights it up. So that's why they have ballast ignitions in them. So anyway, this is all we need. Let's go and play. Steering. 50s. No, second world war. Even before them trucks had it. Okay. We have arrived with the ute and the parts. Now being winter time, it's probably the best time to play these silly games because we're least likely to um, start a fire. Every Aussie knows that in summertime here, fire is our biggest worry. So, followed by snakes. Yeah, summertime yeah. there could be a few snakes around. You want to grab a screwdriver at the back and undo that and see if we can get the bit of hose off. We can join the transmission lines together. I'll hang the coil in place. still got the distributor cap on it so I'm hoping everything's still as it was prior to having the lead stolen off it. Now I haven't had this running so I've had this car since 2010 and when I got it it was already partially pulled apart and so anybody's guess how long it's been since it's been on the road. So that's our breaker point ignition. That little cam in there that opens and closes the points. The points are actually sitting open at the moment, so they've most likely been oxidized. I've got a little bit of emery paper in there I can um, clean them up with if we have to, but we'll see what happens first. So naturally, we're gonna to have to have ignition, fuel, and compression to get the beast to run. So now generally on a Holden, everything's going to be the same for same. So we should be able to just take the cap off the other car plug all the leads on and have it run. So what have we got? One, five, three, six, two, four. And we've got a coil and we've got a, we've even got a push on connector on the primary side, which we want. So we can just push that on there. Look at that. The forces are aligning. Now there's an oil gauge line where do you go to? Oh, I've still got an oil gauge on the other end. This is cool. Scanic oil gauge. We should see if we've got oil pressure. That'll be good. Right, uh, there's another one of those little clips in the back of the ute there too. Yep. <coughs> Where am I going to be, Rob? Actually, there's one here, Bill. Don't need that. Just Don't worry. Gonna... It's good because I can't see the one in the back of the ute. Just got to loop the transmission lines. So we've got cooling pipes for the transmission which go into the radiator and for the amount of time we're going to have it running it's not going to matter so that we don't have a radiator or a transmission cooler. You get that screwdriver Bill? Yep. Up. Thanks Bill. No worries. As long as the fan doesn't get tangled up in it, we should be pretty right. Could make a right mess. Wasp nest. Paper wasps, yeah. Yeah, they get a little bit grumpy if you start messing them around on a hot day too.
this one's been chopped off. No, it said it'd make a right mess if the hose got chopped up by the fan. Might flick a bit of oil around as well. Yeah, well that's sort of more what I was thinking was you're sitting in front of it and um... Now, make sure we're out of gear. This one's an automatic, so if we pull the linkage all the way up. Wait, wait, wait. Right. Where are we? That's our gear linkage there, so all the way down will be low, all the way up will be park. So we should be in park there. That's the gear linkage. That's the gear linkage there, yep, here we go. So when you shift the lever on the column, all it's doing is moving this up and down. Your hand is all I can see. That's right, you got it. Okay. Yep. Now we don't have to ground the coil. The spark we get out of this is actually negative, believe it or not, but you don't get it through the casing of the coil. So we've just got to sit that in there somewhere. And we've also got to get some fuel up to it. So we might as well just try everything that's in here first. As long as there's not a hole in that filter and the pump wants to pump, we should be able to suck a bit of fuel up with that. Could be a bit dodgy. Couldn't it just? Yeah. Your hose looks a little short. Yeah, I mean I was just trying to work out the easiest way of doing it without putting anything where it's gonna get killed. What about on this side of the motor? Gotta have the hose reach it. Come back into problem A, hose is a little short. Only on one end. Oh, well, you're not wrong, I suppose. Only on one end. So what we want, somewhere to park. Ideally, is a longer hose. Sound like a good flow chart, almost worked out. Well, it seems like the obvious solution, you know, is <laughs> longer hose. So, oh, oh. Longer hose. Here's one I prepared earlier. I thought that might work. Yeah, but as long as the fuel filter is going to be good enough to get the hose off without it splitting. Hmm. Well, you can probably just borrow the one off of your car. If it was necessary for the cause, my car would not mind. Oh no. So that's into the fuel. Let's grab a battery and see if we can get it to turn over. So I brought a battery and a jump pack. Let's see what we need. And right -o, so. It's quite a good lead. That lead there is a bit sad on one end. A little bit short too. Yeah, I didn't bring the jumper leads I meant to as well. I might have to go back for another bit. You know, let's try it with this. This will work without a battery. Okay, we need a good earth point on the engine. Power down to the starter. That's on. Okay, we've got a connection everywhere. A pair of vice grips would have worked for that too. Anyway, we shall see what we got. Universal ignition key. Looking down there to see if we're going to lift any fuel up into that bowl. Into that bowl. Alright, so we've got a starting point. 
Let's see if we can cheat it a bit. Talk to me. Going to put some power onto the coil, squirt a bit of fuel in the carby, and see if it wants to light up. Because you've got fuel in the fuel filter. Well, I've got fuel coming, so the fuel will be working its way around this pipe and into the carburetor. Needle and seat may be stuck, might not be, but we'll find out. Oh, we've got a spark. We've got a circuit there, there's little sparks, so the points must be making a connection. A bit of flame at the back there, out the end of the exhaust pipe. Does the exhaust pipe not go all the way back? Just down under oh, the car. Right, well then, yeah. Away. Yep. What have we got? Just turn the key off for a minute. Pops and sparks, it's promising. It's pretty common to have stuck valves, and if it's got this intake valve open, it, once the spark lights up in the cylinder, a bit of fuel and air, and it's going to pop back out the carby. We'll have a quick look in I here. I saw flame come out the carby. Yeah, that happens. I came down here a few years ago after a bit of a blow and the um, bonnet had blown off this car or hood depending on what you call it where you live and um, it was winter time and so i figured some of it had fallen down there a bit of rain and stuff we'd had but the engine still turned around so i wasn't super worried about it if you get that horrible feeling you swing on the fan this little sort of noise where there's a rusted up cylinder and things like that then you might think she's dead but um turns out it still turned around so i figured it'd still be good now this engine has got a yellow terra head on it, the yellow paint on the head. Now yellow terra, for everyone who isn't familiar with six cylinder Holdens and V8 Holdens, was a company called Perfect Tune, which started building performance cylinder heads off the shelf for Holdens back in the day. And um, so they put big valves in them, they ported them a bit. and advertise certain power gains for certain dollars spent so anybody's guess what particular stage this head is but, um, whether she's a mild or wild one but it's on there it's also got a set of tube headers or extractors as they're commonly known we've got a bit of fuel in there so it's got fuel coming in right the float is gummed up that should just, it's freeing up now, but the needle's stuck in there. Get the needle to move. So you get a little needle valve right in there that the float pushes on. So if we can lift it up so you can see it, that little lever on the top there closes that needle up. So if we crank him now, you should be able to see a bit of fuel come in. If you look back down, look from, yeah. this, look from this angle over here, because if the fire comes out of here, you don't want to be flamed up in there. You are correct. That's the fuel flooding in. So, accelerator pump's not working. So there's a pump that should be squirting a jet of fuel in across here, but that's not working. But hopefully the main jet will. So we put a bit of fuel in there. Just give it a bit of throttle. Got to turn the key back on, hadn't I? Oh, that Couldn't yeah. hurt. <sighs> I think she's flooding. Yeah, that uh, looks pretty flooded to me. Yeah. Wake 
hard up there. Oh, it certainly did. <laughs> the joys of trying to start old engines. We'll just sit the lid back on. What about you, Bill, to make you jump? No, I was expecting that. I was surprised you had the camera that close. <laughs> And after you were just told, uh, you know, I might. have my heart that close. <laughs> right, let's have another go. We're trying. Did you fix the spring? No. So this is just flooding, is it? No, no, I've stopped it from flooding. I have oh. to float back and got that to seal up. Stale fuel kicking around in there. Can I smell that? Yeah, so a bit of fresh stuff sitting on top. Try and with some money. Do we try and pull the rocker cover off and free a valve or two up, or do we just persevere? We'll give it a bit more. Winding up kike around though. Yeah, they already did that right at the start. That was an early on thing. Whose idea was this? <laughs> Be kicking flame out the carb like that, isn't that what you're saying? That it's stuck like intake valve. Wouldn't you want to fix the intake valve first? I've got to take the rocker cover off to do that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we can do but that. But like it'd run without, even with the stuck intake, you'd just be replying on the other cylinders. Yeah, it depends right. on how many are stuck. So yeah, if okay. it's only got yeah. one stuck, then it'll the pop others will carry it. Yeah, it's and just it's not very efficient. I, get you. I was hoping it'd go, <laughs> but it didn't start. do that. Yeah, that's a technical sort of mechanic talk there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, anyway, if you guys wait I here, understand I'll just a little bit of that. Rip back and go and grab the socket to get the rocker cover off. Right. And then we'll lift that off and I'll bump a few of the valves and see if we can get them to spring up and down because that's all it'll be. So they'll just be gummed up. So now here's a rough rule of thumb for all you engine guys out there that are looking at dead cars, barn finds and things like that. If you come across an engine like this in a car like this, if the engine is seized, generally it was a very good engine when the car was parked because good engines don't have a lot of oil around the cylinders. You can have one that'll still turn and it's still a very good engine, it just hasn't grabbed, but it'll have a crop of stuck valves. And that means it's got a good head on there because once again, not a lot of oil. If you've got engines that were on the point of death when the car was parked up and they were just fuming everywhere and burning gallons of oil and stuff like that, generally they'll just start up and run because there's that much oil everywhere that it keeps everything free and nice and the valves want to just work straight away and I've had engines that have sat for 35 years and you just hit them and they go but they are smoky like they're tired old engines so this one probably is a good engine like if we could put this into another car and I'd be inclined to say even without getting it running it would be rough enough that we would be able to use it and see what happened 
The other thing I have found though with engines like this that you do put back into service, they don't do huge miles without breaking rings up. And I don't know what it is that happens with it, but I've come across it plenty of times where there's been an engine that sat for 20 years or 30 years, you put it back into a vehicle and in a short period of time it'll break the top rings. So even if it was a very low mileage engine and a very good collector car, it would pay to put a set of rings in it without actually just dropping it in and thinking that you're going to go off and do 10,000 miles in it without any problems. So anyway, I'll grab some spanners, we'll be back. Okay. I suppose that'll work. an interesting washer shape they've got there. Yep. And that's another little HQ Holden feature too. It's the um, later design. The earlier ones were sort of this shape on both sides and then with the 1971 model they went to this design like that. So it's a real model change car this one. Last month of production for these. You know tiger snakes don't hibernate, right? Yep, I know tiger snakes don't hibernate. Does one just wriggle across your foot? No. Okay. Well, I'm thinking about it now. You're thinking about it now with all the long grass around yep. us? They don't like exhaust smoke. That'll scare them out. They certainly don't like exhaust noise. <laughs> but if you thought you were scared... <laughs> you think they'd be more scared than me? I've heard so. that story, but I'm not sure. All right, how many snakes do you know that just live in cars? A few. <laughs> oh well, never mind them. <laughs> yeah, they're the perfect snake habitats. They get inside them. They, they get inside them. Ones. I reckon they'd be long gone by now though. I don't think they like what we're doing. They would have slothered away. On the other hand, now that it's quiet, they've come back. Oh, you're a big help. Thank you. <laughs> I <know> just. <laughs> yeah, what we need. Well, if this was your home and strangers had come and made loud noises, you'd then the loud noises stopped. With you'd, fire. You'd want to send them off, wouldn't you? I'd think so. Oh, 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 what are you having here? Taking off oh. the rock cover. Right, so I thought we covered that part. Okay. Now, uh, she's a bit crudded up. This one's near. No, I'll take back what I said. She hasn't had an oil change for a long, long time. All this build up in here. So I'd say she's smoky. Well, I don't want to think about what the inside of mine looks like then. It's your fault. Right, we're looking for, it looks like they're popping up and down. We might just have rusty seats or something like that and they're not sealing. We'll give him a spin, see what he wants to do. Okay, I'm going to step further back. The coil wire came off over there, didn't it? You unhooked the key. I did not. You did when you lifted up the rocker cover. It was the cat. Uh, where can I poke that? There we go. Well, that one doesn't even move. There we go. So that valve there is sitting down. And... Rocky, rocky, rock. Those here that don't want to do anything. One there, right, so that one there stuck down, and these two in the middle here are stuck down. So I've got two in the middle together that are intake valves, so they won't be helping us. So, that one in there. Turn the key off. Right on. And just drop that back in the ute tub. So we've got three intakes that are all down. That one's popped the rod out, I think. Looking at that, that push rod sitting on top of the lifter. A 
little bit of brass isn't going to worry an engine. It'll just get stuck in the oil filter. It won't mash pump gears or anything like that on the way past. That one's starting to creep its way back up. Need a bit of lubrication down past the stem, and it'll Tech version of the same problem I had with the trumpet. Yes. Stuck valves. Yep. So will it go? It'll go. Just got to get it to seal up enough. We need this valve to just be pop, pop, pop straight back up. So that one just pops back, and just pops back. It doesn't look like you're doing anything. No, but I'm springing the valve and it's just popping back into the same spot. Look, the hammer's bouncing on the end of the valve. That's what this one needs to be doing. Maybe it's going down. It's going down and staying down, so yeah. So we can get some. We might have to undo that rocker and put the push rod back in on this one, I'd say. Looks like it's a bit past the point that they should be at. That one could be sitting on a piston. Will that worry the piston? Not if we don't start the engine up. If we start the engine up, it'll come around and bash the valve and um, bend the valve. And the starter motor doesn't have enough force to do that. Oh, you'd do some damage. You'd do some damage on the starter motor. The worst thing is if it fires on one of the other cylinders at the same time. And then it'll just hit it around. Like if you've got a bit of water in a cylinder from a leaking head gasket and it catches and runs on a couple of other cylinders, it'll enough to break a cylinder head or break a cylinder wall. Yeah, we're getting a bit of spring back in. I thought there was a bit of improvement on that last spray, but yep. this one looks a lot better. Yeah. Not as much as the others though. No, no, it's still got a way to go yet. It comes up high enough, we can get it wet in there. But being a replacement cylinder head, it probably got to get put onto an old engine anyway. So the cylinder head might still be a good thing. That's better. Yeah, we're getting somewhere. That one works. Righto, what are you doing? Turn him with my hand. 
Right, so that one there is committing up. Right, so that's got you. might be down for the count. Oh no, he's coming back up. He's coming back up. What about you? Better now. novel way of making brass shavings. Yep. Yeah, fortunate that's why I'm using the brass drift is that um, it's a hammer in this case but a drift would work as well. The little brass shavings won't affect the engine. Because they're soft. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll go through the oil pump. The first thing that the oil goes through after the oil pump is the oil filter and they'll just lodge in the oil filter. That one's coming good. That's so we had half the engine with stuck valves. There's three of them, and they're all intakes. So um, didn't have a hope in actually wanting to run. So. But will it go? Yes, we'll get it to go. And that one's coming back up. Yeah, she's starting to get there. Now these have got the typical General Motors or valve stem seals on them, which is just the little O-ring that goes underneath the retainer at the top there and seals the stem to the retainer. And then you've got this shield over the top of the spring as an umbrella so the oil drips outside where the stem is. So by getting a bit of um, CRC in our case in on the stem, we're working with a bit of lubricant down the stem. Ford motors, if they were at this stage, I'd say the little umbrella seals would have died and gone to heaven. You'd have success doing the same thing. But worst case scenario on something like this, you could poke a screwdriver in there and break them up just so you get a bit of lubricant in on the stems to free the valves. Okay, that's a sticky valve now, not a stuck valve. That one we might have to give up on. But with that one, it'll the rest of the engine will run without that one. And just yeah, it'll, just, it'll spit out the carby a bit. That's all. Right. But, um, we shouldn't be too worried about that. We've already seen fire. We have. We know what it looks like. We're tough. We can take it. All right. Let's give it a try and see what it wants to do. What it doesn't want to do. Not perfect, but. We've got a ch better chance of it running now than what we had before. Key. We'll give it about that much.
Mm, she doesn't want to play the game, does it? That one valve pod, look at it. Sounds like it's running out of battery too. Yeah. And how it's not turning over at the same speed. You hear it sort of speed up and slow down. That's a good observation. That's the sign that it's blowing back under this valve. So when you've got five cylinders all coming up on compression, that's your struggling noise. Yep. Where it runs free is the one where the valve's open, there's no compression, it's just pushing it straight back out, out yeah, the okay. intake. Yep. And that's why it doesn't want to go. Okay. So, <laughs> hammer again. That one's well and truly stuck. But it is returning slowly. Great family activity for Father's Day, you know? <laughs> Let's go and play down the back paddock. I was just thinking at the rate you're going through brass, your Father's Day present might need to be a new brass hammer. Wearing a little bit of it off. Uh, it'll still work. It'll still work. Yeah, and there's enough hammer left over afterwards. It'll go for a bit longer. Show us again. Oh wow. Yeah. Well these are hardened, so it's, it's a hard piece of metal. And it's got the typical yellow terra double valve springs to it. Should be ripping those valves closed really quick too. You'd think. It's got gold flecks, it looks really pretty. Yep. Is it going down at all? Yeah, we're hitting on the piston though. I'll wait for it to come back up. And so you can hear that ringing. Yeah, it's hitting on the piston. This thing. Yeah, that just bottomed the spring too. Is the other possibility? Yeah, so that's what we've done. It's just bottomed it. Did it have that little the rocker? Just that little imperfection there, or is that? Oh, that might have been. No, that's where I was hitting it with the hammer. Right. It's giving it a bit of sideways to see. Yeah, it. yeah. It's not going to stop it from running. Just curious. Mm. That one might be well and truly dead, I'm afraid. That valve. What we can do? Let's do that. Right. Up. Let's have another go. Cheat a bit. So you're taking that. It won't fire. No spark plug. Isn't that an intake valve? Yes, but the plug won't fire, so it won't ignite that hole up. So if we can get the engine running without that working, right? you with me? I'm a little confused because I thought with the intake valve stuck, it wouldn't be getting air and it wouldn't fire anyway. No, no, it gets air and fuel in there when the piston goes down because the valve's open, the exhaust valve is closed. So um, that's why. Oh, so it's stuck open? Yeah, it's stuck open. Right, okay. That's it. <laughs> I think our battery pack's getting a bit flat. I shall go and get something. I shall return. We'll hook this one in as well. Fun for the whole family indeed. It's proving to be a little trickier than hoped. Ah, oh, yeah. We try things, sometimes they work. Yeah. So, it's... Uh, see, I reckon for diagnosis purposes, we just need glass engines. 
Because being able to see the internals like this makes it a lot easier to diagnose. Absolutely. I sort of, I look at my engine and I go, oh gee, I feel like it might be flooding. And it's like, well here, you know, you carve it off and see it filling up with fuel. And it's like, oh yeah, looks like it's flooded all right. <coughs> Same thing, you know, it's sort of the master uh, mechanic listens to the sound of the engine. Oh yeah, that's a stuck valve. Um, and you know, here we sort of, you can see, well, that valve's not moving, so. That's it, yeah, it's a whole lot easier when you can see see yeah that's it you can see which ones are moving and which ones are not that's it we, we don't need the arcane knowledge of sort of yeah yeah 40, no that's 40 uh, plus years of 50 now isn't it <laughs> how old are you 56 well in that case i think it would be 50 years of automotive industry experience yeah, definitely um yeah he was right there at his dad's knee Underfoot. Uh oh, he's back. Looks serious. Right up. The things that we do on a weekend. Now here's my little tool truck caddy. I'm going to have to upset it, hook the battery cable up to it, without dropping all the parts. So how long have you been doing this for, roughly? That might help for hook the key up. Probably be helpful, I'd say. Right, what have we got now? Might have solved some of the problems and not all the problems. Alright, what have we got down here? Uh, if we. No, we got nothing. No spark? No, no spark. Larkies. Well, you had spark. I had spark, but it's gone for some reason. But where did you test it before? Well, I was coughing and spluttering before, it's not doing it now. But we've got no zap down there. Well, didn't you test it on here earlier? No. We've got no power coming through. Wires come off. No, I've hooked it on over there. You've hooked it elsewhere in your uh, wiring house. Yeah, yeah, well that should all work because there's power that's hooked onto the... Uh, where are we? Black wire. We hook you onto there. Oh, Got power there. Spark. Yeah, but we want spark in the right spot though. Oh, yeah, now we've got a bit of spark down there, right. So we want one of these. Did you test it in there? Do you want me to? Mm. Yep, there's spark there. Little teeny spark there, and there's what we want. If you're getting a low voltage spark out of a plug lead or the coil lead, and you've got a big fat spark at the breaker points, the condenser's at the bottom, which is the little cylinder can inside there. So righto, now we've got that working. <laughs> Sounded a bit more holdeny. As long as it wants to stay on there and I don't bump it off. Now 
fuel pump might have stopped pumping fuel up too. Let's see what we got down there. No, it's not going to spark now. It's fighting you, Rob. It is fighting me. It knows it's on camera. It's just a little bit camera shy is the trouble. Yeah, we've got spark through to there. We've got spark through to that spot there. But we've only got straight 12 volt coil. So what we might do... Was fuel going through? Well, it's got fuel we can visibly see there, but whether it's not actually... Okay. Will that do this? Just put the coil onto that one. Oh. Don't know if that's going to work or not. Just run on the jump pack by itself, but we'll try that and see what it does. <laughs> Apparently it will. And it's got oil pressure. <laughs> Where was the oil pressure? Gauge up there. It's just coming back to zero now. I'll fire it again. So you ready? Yep. <laughs> the fabled five-cylinder engine. Yeah, the five-cylinder Holden. So that's only that valve, and free that up, and she'd run sweet. So we might just hit him again and see if we can... Um, now it's got a little bit of heat there beside it, warming the stem up. If that valve wants to recover, we can get it run on six. I don't know that we're going to have a lot of joy with this one. I think it's more a head off and drive it out and clean it up and put it back together. Yeah, no, it's still sitting bottom. Yeah, no, we won't have joy with that one. Oh, we'll call it quits. It ran. <laughs> Okay guys, thanks for being here with us today. It's Father's Day, so we're just sort of appeasing my little games today. Deb's on camera, son Bill's here helping. It's been a great afternoon. We'll catch you next time.